Hi guys, a couple of users have been asking about how to use the Adobe Premiere Sling extension. So I created a quick video on how to do this. Um, so here's my Adobe Premiere and I've created just a simple untitled document and I'm going to open up this project and you can see that there's no footage in here. So what I do is, is come up to window and you're going to go down to find extension on exchange and jump over to Adobe websites um, to download the extension for Sling. Once you've done that, you're going to see that it imports right here to extensions and Sling Studio. So we're just going to click on this and up will come a new window. So this window has two choices. The top one here says import project. What this is going to do is import your footage, your program feed, your individual cameras that is recorded from your project with this button. The bottom button, what it does is, is it does the same thing as the top one, except that it does give you the ability to import the original native footage that is stored on your camera. So if your camera records at a higher rate or a higher bit rate than what the Sling Studio records at, you can use that and replace or instead of the Sling Studio footage. So we're just going to use this top one for the moment. So I'm going to hit select project. And now I'm going to jump down to my external hard drive, which is this untitled right here. So in our untitled, I see that there's a Sling Studio project here. So I'm going to click on that and jump over to my Sling Studio projects. Important, do not change any of these file names because that will screw things up big time. So leave everything alone exactly as you, as you see it and as you created it. So I'm going to import this Saturday morning 3.3 project and press open. And it's going to start importing. And this can take anywhere from... 10 seconds to about a minute, depending on how big and how long your footage is. This event that I am importing right now is roughly about two and a half hours to three hours long. Uh, just as a quick tip as we're waiting for this to import, um, is, is once my project is created, I tend to hit the record button and I don't hit stop until the event is over. Um, I've had a couple of people that have accidentally hit the stop button or they did the stop button on purpose in between during an intermission and then only to find out that they forgot to hit the record button afterwards. This is finished importing so it says successfully imported. I'm going to press OK. I'm going to close this window here and now I'm going to jump down to my list view and I see all the different things that I've, I've imported. My audio input, a camera, my production program output, another camera, another camera, another camera, and then audio tracks. And the one I'm looking for is really this merge sequence right here. And I'm just going to double click on it to open it up. So as this opens up, this will disappear in a second. There it goes. So as I open it up, that you could see each of the different tracks. So I'm just going to slide over to the right so you can there it is. We start to see this blue piece right here that was the camera that was live at that moment then there was a switch onto this camera and currently the the computer is ingesting all of this footage you can see down here by your status bar this does take a while so you're better off to just sit back or get yourself a cup of coffee while this is running but for our purposes right now I just want to show you what it looks like so I'm going to bring the head right over to this camera spot and see whether or not it does switch. It didn't switch right now because it's input. Oh, there it goes. So um, this head allows you to see the differences between all your switches. So right now, the program that is actually being shown in Premiere, I usually turn this off. So that means that I'm now looking at the actual camera switches themselves. Now, the next question is, is about the audio track. So I never have my cameras recording audio or using the audio on the live program. I'm always using a line input, which is right here. And these tracks are muted, but that doesn't mean that you can't turn the muting off and then make a section active if something sounded better on that camera. So what you would do is, is unmute that spot right here. And what I would do is I would use my blade. I would grab a blade, sorry. I would chop this section, maybe add another section right in here, come back to my pointer, and then now this section right here, I'm going to enable it. So in the audio track, this 
would be the part that would actually be used. So this is importing uh, right now. I'm just going to make this project line a little bit bigger so you could see all the different switches and transitions. And that's here with some more of the switches later on. So I hope this has been helpful for everybody. Have a great day.